In the heart of the African jungle, into the very center of a dense forest where few white men have ever dared to travel, we are bent upon a great adventure. The entire gym swims with pop adders, the most treacherous and the deadliest of African reptiles. The intense heat and the moisture combine to form a mist or haze. There is a strange, indescribable fascination to this most primitive scene, and especially to the giant heather. In England, it grows to a height of four feet. Here, it often rises to the height of 40 feet. After many days and nights of uncertain and dangerous travel, we come upon those strange and ever restless little nomads, Africa's pygmies. They have had a good day of hunting, and we find them feasting on raw elephant meat. The carving, always an important ceremony, is done by the chief, who is always especially conscious of this great honor. Toothless and rough going. On this day, they seem unusually happy and carefree because they're being well fed, and they know that there is plenty of food ahead for several days to come. We soon learn that the pygmies are planning to build a bridge to span a river infested with crocodiles. Through countless generations, these little people have lost thousands to the terrible monsters. As children, they learn to fear the rivers. To build their bridge, the pygmies must accumulate tons of material. Vines must be knotted together to make them long enough to span the river. Their task is before them, and they're about to begin. We will soon see a most amazing example of primitive engineering. The tallest tree overhanging the stream is selected. It's 150 feet high, and to its top they laboriously climb. Later, they'll construct a crude ladder of vines. This withered little old man believes his job is to criticize. In order to reach the top, masses of tangled growth must be cut and cleared away. On the topmost branch that reaches far out to the middle of the river, they fasten a rope of vines, which will hang almost to the water, in which are hidden the ever alert and deadly crocodiles. I tell you it won't work. Why don't you listen to me? Now, at the lower end of the vine, two loops are made to form a sort of a saddle into which a man can fasten his legs. The pygmy who is to be the first to cross the river and carry the vine to its opposite side must have great courage as his fellow tribesmen are preparing to literally hurl him into the trees on the far side. As we watch these little men work, we begin to realize both the size and the peril of their undertaking we realize that despite their small size, their determination is great. Below, the vicious beasts keep watch. Should the vine break, should something go wrong, these creatures, fast as a greyhound, would soon satisfy their carnivorous craving. Now the vine is drawn high. Then, quickly, the holding vine is cut, and there he goes. But he is missed. The vine is too short. The vine must be moved farther out and lengthened. I told you it wouldn't work. Now listen to me. Again, he is pulled up high so that his swing will be greater. Truly a daring effort. And there he goes again. Again, failure. The vine is still too short. It won't work, I tell you. On the third attempt, he will carry a hooked stick to increase his reach and afford a better chance to catch hold of a vine or branch on the other side. 
this time he is really going up. Bio, bio, they all shout. In pygmy language, this means higher, higher. Now the vine is almost horizontal, and watch. And success comes to these little men of the jungle. See, you could have done it the first time. The drag of the heavy line on this pygmy's frail little body is terrific, but he hangs on trying to work himself free of the saddle without letting go of the vine. Exhausting work, and especially so with everyone below shouting orders and advice. At last he is out, and the vine is securely fastened. The first man and the first vine are safely across the river. Even the old critic is very pleased. The crocodiles are disappointed. Now begins the equally perilous task of carrying more vines across the river. The little men continue to climb to the top of the huge tree, each carrying their share of the vines. To the top they all go, then down to the slanting vine high over the river of doom. The first vine has been stretched into position and the bridge will soon extend from one giant tree to another on the opposite bank of the river. Every little man has his work to do and everyone works industriously as more vines constantly arrive and are immediately prepared. About 60 feet above ground on both trees, huge ladders have been built to lead to the forks in the branches to which the bridge is now anchored. The bridge is being built. It is being built very high because with the constant alternation of hot sunshine and terrific rainstorms, it may sag as much as 20 feet, and there is no way for the pygmies to raise it once the sag has set in. This primitive bridge, now weighing many tons, is as great an engineering feat to the pygmies as is the building of any of our great modern spans to us. Materials keep pouring in. The efficiency of these little people is truly amazing. Some take turns hunting, for everyone must be fed and fed well while the big job goes on. At the end of six days, the bridge is nearing completion. Even though there is still some decking to be installed, they're using the bridge, for the men on both sides must be fed. On the eighth day, the two teams of workers will meet in the middle of the great span, the span that now extends for 173 feet from tree to tree. It's 50 feet above the water. This friendly little tribe could have built the bridge in less time, but on dark and rainy days they would stop, as we had explained as best we could, that unless the sun shone, photography was out of the question. The bridge is finished. They play with it like children with a new toy. The pygmies have conquered another river and have protected themselves once more against the deadly perils of the treacherous crocodiles that are ever on the alert to seek out their human prey. <laughs>